Hello my dears, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm sitting here now to film an intro to this reading vlog, which um, I wanted to get done in another way so I can start reading. But um, as you can see from the title of this vlog, today we are reading Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Now, let me back up a bit and tell you how I came to land on this book for this vlog. So, about a week or so ago, I saw over on Kayla's channel, um, Books in Lala, I saw that she posted a video about abandoned reading vlog ideas that she had had over the past year or however long. And one of the ideas that she had in that video was she thought she would read whatever book was the number one bestseller on the day she was born. And then like maybe when she was 10 and when she turned 20 and so on. Um, so I was like, that's a cute idea, um, but I wanted to take it back a little further. I thought maybe what I would do instead of that is um, read the book that was the number one bestseller on important people in my life's birthday. So I looked it all up. I looked for my daughter. It was The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. I'd already read that. On the day that I was born, um, and that carried on to the day Ed was born, the book that was the number one New York Times bestseller was um, I think The Hotel New Hampshire by John Irving and I will be getting to that one for sure not in this vlog but eventually because I haven't read it and I do love John Irving I love The Cider House Rules and A Prayer for Owen Meany so I would love to read that for my mom's it was um, a book called I think Hawaii I can't remember the author but it was like a crime mystery sort of thing which isn't my favorite not my favorite genre so then I was like well, let's see what book was number one on the year and the day my grandmother was born and she was born in January 1939 and that took me to Rebecca <laughs> now I can remember trying to read this when I was younger probably a teenager um, and I never I, I never finished it so I was like, well, this is the perfect time to read it because I know I'm going to love it. It sounds right up my alley in like every way imaginable. So I ordered this. First of all, first of all, I don't know if you can see how gorgeous this cover is. It's so beautiful. Um, and this is the 80th anniversary edition. So this would have been printed a few years ago because if my grandmother was still alive, she would currently be 84. So this would also be 84. <laughs> um... But yeah, it was beautiful. I got this for $15 on Amazon. It's a hardcover, 80th anniversary edition, beautiful copy. So if you've been looking for a copy, they've got it for an amazing price on Amazon right now. So we're going to be reading Rebecca, and I'm very excited about it. After this, the next one we'll tackle is Moms. Even though it's not my favorite genre, I still want to read the one that was number one when she was born. Then maybe I'll find out what my sister's is and then eventually read the one that was when Ed and I were born. So that's what we're doing in this vlog. <laughs> I can't promise that it's going to be a very exciting vlog because it's going to be a pretty low-key type of week. Um, last week would have been a bit more exciting because we went to the city, we did some things, but it just didn't work out for that vlog to be last week. So we're just going to have a sort of cozy vlog and read Rebecca and see what it's all about in book form. So let's just get on into it. Hi there guys and welcome to this reading vlog. As you saw in that intro that just passed, we're reading Rebecca this week. Currently I'm out running some errands with Anna. We're at Canadian Tire. She's just got in to fill up the water cooler water jug for at home. Uh, Canadian Tire, if you don't know, it's this store in Canada that has tires it has hunting gear, it has gardening supplies, it has snacks, it has coffee, like, it's, it's got everything, like, aside from groceries. It's a very strange, it's a very strange store. Hang on. <laughs> so yeah, she's gone on in there. It's beautiful today. It's a little windy, but it's like plus 18 Celsius. So we're gonna maybe go get a cold drink, then head home. And then I'm going to do some reading after I put the, the bottle back in the water cooler. <laughs> All right, so I've done, I've had a nice afternoon of reading, I would say. I read for probably about an hour. So I'm on chapter seven now, page 68. And um, we're just, we're getting to the point where um, 
the unnamed narrator has met uh, Maxim and he's asked her to come back to Manderley in England and marry him. And she's just told her, um, her companion who she's been working for that she's going to be going with him and not with her. And she's just gotten a bit of an earful from her companion sort of saying like, you should know that he doesn't love you. He just can't live there anymore. So we'll see. It's this, we came to Manderley in early May, arriving, so Maxim said, with the first swallows and the bluebells. So I'll check back in with you in a while. It's evening now, I'm just making some dinner and we picked up a bottle of wine to have with it. We've never tried this kind before, but I liked the, I liked the artwork on the bottle. Okay, I thought I would come now and give you a bit of an update on Rebecca, but also just in general. Um, so yesterday I went and filmed the first episode, or I didn't film it, sorry, recorded the first episode of a new podcast that I'm doing with um, a local friend of mine. And it's book related with a bit of a niche twist. And I hope to have the first episode up on YouTube. We're going to create a YouTube channel for it and also a Spotify account. So we're hoping to have the first episode up on both of those soon, hopefully tonight. It's the first episode, so <laughs> we're still working out the kinks. But um, I think some of you guys will really like it. It's not going to be for everyone because of the niche twist. But um, we had a lot of fun and we can't wait to see where it goes. So for the first episode of it, we talked about The Drift by CJ Tudor, which you've been around this channel for a while. You know, I did a book review on. Um, and so we talk more in depth about that there. And the next episode is going to be on Bunny by Mona Awad, which I love that book, as you know. But for now, let's get back to Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So I'm about 100 pages in so far. And I would say that um, I'm enjoying it. First of all, though, this man, Maxim de Winter, what an absolute nightmare of a bundle of red flags. <laughs> um, so anyway, our unnamed narrator, she meets him when she's in Monte Carlo with her companion. And we know that, right off the bat, we know that he's, his wife has died. She drowned on the grounds of their home, Manderley. And um, he's just kind of getting to know no name <laughs> and um when she's getting ready to go with her companion we learn that she has no family so she really needs this job because he's kind of like why are you working for this woman like and she's like well you know i have no family she pays me and i need the you know the place to stay in the money so she's getting ready to go to new york with her companion and he's getting ready to return to manderley and he says, why don't you come with me instead? And she was like, you mean come work for you? And he says, no, you little idiot. I believe it's the exact way he words it. Um, marry me and be my wife. And she accepts and they tell her companion together. Or he tells her and then she talks to him. Um, yeah, he tells her and then she talks to her. And um, when they're alone, her companion's kind of like, girl <laughs> he's just using you he wants a new wife like you're what are you gonna do there how are you gonna fit in so now they're gone they're gone back and the narrator is getting to know the um the staff in particular miss danvers who kind of runs the household and um i just know this is gonna get this is gonna get crazy, but yeah, the things he says, you just, you know right off the bat from as soon as you meet him pretty much that this man's gonna be a problem. And I'm sure that's true. So I'm guessing there's gonna be some mystery around what happened to his first wife, Rebecca. And um, that the house seems to be haunted by the ghost of her. Now, I don't know if that's like a literal ghost story, ghost haunting, or more like, her memories the spirit of her is haunting the house so it'll be interesting to see so that's where we're at for now i'm gonna go read some more and we'll see how it goes so it's the next day now i'm out running some errands and it is currently 27 degrees that is too hot but it's too hot for the beginning of may despite the too warm temperatures though it is absolutely gorgeous out mm, beautiful blue sky it's, hang on, let me turn down the air conditioning. It is a few
few hours later now and it's 30. What is going on here? I hope this isn't like a preview of what summer's gonna be like. Okay, so I'm just doing some reading now this morning. Um, I'm trying to think of what's happened. We've met Maxim's sister, Beatrice. She came to visit. She's very friendly and welcoming, but still a little, you know, there's just something about her that makes you wonder what she knows about her brother that she's not saying. Then there was this whole situation by the beach when the dog, Jasper, kind of got away from them and... Um, no name went to go see if she could help and find the dog because she was worried about the tide coming in and um, Maxim just let her go off on her own and didn't go and try to help her. So that was a little weird. But then he explains to her that he's got bad memories associated with this beach because um, I'm guessing this is probably where Rebecca died and that was why he didn't want to go down there. So we'll see what happens next. Okay, I'm currently working on The Secret Project. Just made a YouTube channel for it, which um, I talked about earlier in the vlog, what the, what the project is, but I didn't give too much away. But I'm getting close to getting ready to announce it. So I'm out now about to get a little, a little treat to try I'm at Tim Hortons, and I'm gonna try their new Oreo ice cap. So I will report back how that goes. Okay, so I've got the ice cap, but I just, I'm gonna wait till I get home to try it, but I had to pull over to vlog for a second to tell you guys that the woman in front of me paid for mine, and that just made my absolute day. That is so sweet when that happens. Anyway, we'll report back on the actual ice cap. So I'm home now, and here's what it looks like. It looks good. <laughs> All right, ice cap was delicious. Real good, would recommend. <laughs> All right, so I'm on chapter 16 now, but just about halfway through. It's early morning. I can hear so many birds chirping. You probably can't hear them. Anyway, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, so things are getting a little weird at Manderley. There was a unexpected guest recently who came to see Mrs. Danvers. Um, Beatrice took no name <laughs> to meet her and Maxim's grandmother, who only talked about Rebecca, who's like, I miss Rebecca, where's Rebecca, why isn't Rebecca here? Because she's like, I think in, in dementia or something like that, and she just, she can't remember that Rebecca's gone. Um, things with Maxim are stressful at the house. He's very, um, our narrator is always just walking on eggshells, really terrified to upset him, because when he gets upset, he like questions everything about their marriage. He makes her feel like, he makes her feel really insecure about the way he feels about her and the way he believes she feels about him. So I'll be back for a, another check-in soon. Up to 33 today. What the heck? <laughs> Luckily next week it's going to cool down, but whew, warm week. Okay, I thought I would come now and give a proper update about Rebecca. I've got about 150 pages left. I'm on page 300 and things are really starting to kick off. <laughs> Mrs. Danvers, oh, my nerves. I knew she was gonna be a problem, of course, but um, things are really getting out of hand with her now. So we just had the big party, the big like festive dress ball that they used to have every year at Manderley. And then Maxim hasn't had one since Rebecca died. So all the townspeople, now that he's got a new wife, they're like, oh, we hope you're gonna do it this year. And he's like, eventually, he's like, fine, whatever. Um, and so, our no-named narrator wants to surprise her husband with um, how she's gonna dress up for the party. And so she's trying to come up with an idea. And then Danvers tells her, there's a portrait down in the like sitting room or wherever, the library, of um, an ancestor of Maxim's named Caroline de Winter. And she's wearing this beautiful dress and she's got this dark hair and she's like, you should dress up like that. Imagine how touched he would be. And she was like, you know what, I'll do it. So she has the dress made. The day of the party comes. Maxim still doesn't know anything about it, about what she's gonna dress up as. She goes to get ready. She's so excited, she's so excited. She thinks he is just gonna be blown away with happiness. <laughs> Eventually she's like, okay, 
I'm coming down. And so down there waiting, the party hasn't started yet. So it's like Maxim, his sister Beatrice, her husband. She comes down, she has the drummer of the band for the party announcer like, oh, Caroline DeWinter thinking it's gonna be a huge fun thing. Everyone is silent. There's no clapping, there's no laughing like she anticipated. Maxim looks horrified. Beatrice looks horrified. Maxim is just like, you get up those stairs and you take that off. I don't know what kind of cruel, sick, weirdo joke you're trying to plank, prank, but get up there and take it off. And he's so mad. She's heartbroken when she goes upstairs. Eventually Beatrice comes up and explains to her why she's so mad. Or why he's so mad, sorry. And she tells her that at the last party they threw, Rebecca did the same thing. She dressed up as Caroline DeWinter as a surprise for Maxim. Danvers, of course, knew this, and that's why she told No Name to do it, because she hates Maxim, because he's moved on from Rebecca. In the next chapter, we get a real, a real thought that she was obsessed. She was obsessed with Rebecca, obsessed with her, maybe in love with her herself. Eventually, when No Name goes to confront Danvers, be like, why did you do that? That's when we learn that she hates Maxim, she hates, no name. And she's like, you should just jump off the terrace. Hmm? Why don't you do that? No one wants you here. No one likes you. Go on. Jump off. So that's the last thing I read. That's <laughs> like, oh my word. Um, yeah, so things, things are getting crazy. Danvers is out of it. Out of her ever-loving mind. So we will see what happens next. <laughs> First of all, pardon the noise of the fan. I can't turn it off or I will in fact melt into a puddle and the vlog won't get finished. <laughs> but I believe I warned ahead of time that there'll be spoilers for this because I'm, I'm reading the whole thing and talking about it. But we just found out that Maxim, Maxim just admitted to knowing that he killed and shot Rebecca. And I've still got like 130 pages. What else are we gonna find out? So I've just now finished the book and I'm gonna go film my final thoughts for the vlog. But I thought I'd watch a couple of minutes of the 2020 Netflix adaptation before I did. So I'll probably finish that tonight. But for now, let's go and finish talking about the book. Okay, so where we last left off, um, Maxim, via his confession to our narrator, um, tells her that he had shot his wife and killed her and made it look like her boat had sunk and she drowned. Um, he begins to tell her this whole story about how Rebecca was evil, just the worst terrible woman, and they just kind of had an agreement that she could live at Manderley, act as his wife, take care of the house, and in exchange, you know, he'd give her security and whatnot. Um, but she had affairs. One with her first cousin was the most long-standing one. So anyway, when he's done telling her all this, no name narrator is she's shocked of course but then she finds herself feeling relieved because she had been so threatened the whole time of Rebecca but now she's relieved that he never loved her um so she's like okay we got this we're gonna do this and I will support you and we will support each other and get through this um and that's what they do <laughs> there's a inquisition because he had identified his wife's body before um, but it had just been some rando and he knew that and so that's who's buried in their crypt and then in the end it's deemed a suicide and there's a whole like her lover comes into the picture and there's a whole thing where um, they track down a doctor this worked out a lot in their favor um, they tracked out a doctor. So this this is after it's been deemed a suicide. Now the lover comes out of the woodwork. He's like, there's no way she would have killed herself. So in her diary where she kept track of all of her appointments, there was one noted there many times called Baker. And they track him down and find out he's a doctor. And when they tell her the name, when they tell him the name Mrs. DeWinter, he's like, oh, I didn't have anybody by that name. And the Maxim's like, well, maybe she was using a fake name. So then on the last day that they know she was in town, they find the name Mrs. Danvers in the appointment books. And he's like, okay, well, she must have been using Miss Danvers' name to sort of just keep, keep herself anonymous. And then the doctor's going through the file and he's like, oh, I can't help you. Um, she had cancer. And 
that definitely lends to the suicide theory. So that kind of puts it to bed. The lover's satisfied. He's like, okay, great. Thanks, guys. You want to go for a drink? They, of course, don't. Um, so <sighs> Maxim and Mrs. DeWinter, our no-name narrator, go for lunch and, or dinner or something, and then they're going to drive back to the house. But first, they're going to spend the night in a hotel. But then all of a sudden, Maxim gets this terrible feeling in the pit of his stomach. Like, he knows something's wrong because he called down to the house heard from Frank that Miss Danvers had packed up her things and left. Um, so Maxim's like, you gotta sleep in the back of the car. I'm driving all the way home tonight. We'll be home in like six hours. So our narrator is having nightmares the whole drive. And when they get there, they see that Manderly is on fire. And that's the end. That is the end. One part I did like, though, was after our narrator found out that Maxim hadn't loved Rebecca, she finds her confidence to take over the household. And, like, she's telling Miss Danvers what's what. She's cutting her own flowers. She's doing her own thing. So I like that for her. But, yeah, that was the end. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. I'll probably give it four stars. Um, I thought it was great. And I, I thought it was so fun to get to read what was popular on the day my grandmother was born in 1939. It's fun to get to, I don't know, it was just, it felt like a fun thing to do. And I think she would have loved that book. I think I might have already said this earlier on, but I think she would have loved it. She loved, she loved stories like that. So I hope, I wish I could ask her, isn't that the worst when you wish you could sit and talk with somebody who's passed. I wish I could ask her if she'd ever read it or if she saw the movies. It's been, as you saw, I've put on the 2020 remake with Army Hammer in it. Um, he's a bit of a controversial figure now, but um, in 1940, it was made into a film by Alfred Hitchcock, starring Laurence Olivier as Maxim. I wonder if she, if she'd ever read it or ever saw that movie. Anyway, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I, I got a little sunburnt today, I think. Um, but it's nice. The sun's out. Like, it's hot, and I complain about the heat because I like to joke that it's ice water that runs through my veins. I prefer um, cooler temperatures. I, I would take winter over summer, but I do love the sunshine. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read Rebecca or if you've seen the movie I'd love to know and I'll see you again real soon probably with another spoiler free book review bye guys